Hello everyone, Princess Alethea Contis here. I picked a different tiara to wear today. Of course this one, I've actually taped the ends because when I take it out of my head, off my head, it tends to tear my hair out. But I love the pattern. So at some point I'll have to try and, I don't know, fix that somehow. Maybe daddy can do something. Oh, good morning. I'm a little later than normal because I actually slept. I still woke up in the middle, like 5.30. But I did go back to sleep as much as I sort of wanted to get up and walk on the treadmill because <laughs> while that is a lovely desire, actually getting up and doing it at 5.30 a.m., I used to do that uh, for a little while. When I first moved here, I thought, I will, I can do this Florida heat. I will figure out a way. Hey, good morning, Nat. So I would go out to the beautiful, we have a beautiful walking bridge in Titusville, and I would go out to the the walking bridge at five o'clock in the morning before the sun came up. And there was a bunch of lovely people there and it's it's really well lit. It's not um, dark or scary at all. And it's fairly nice. It's still 100% humidity, but on the water it's a little cooler because there's a breeze. The sunrise was always amazing, but you know, it got hot just like everywhere else around here. So the minute dad found me at treadmill at a yard sale, yay yard sales. Um, I started walking at home <laughs> because it is, it just gets too hot. I mean, seriously, there's a reason the snowbirds go home on me first and it's because it gets too hot, too hot here. So yesterday I went to Bianca's. She sent me that text first thing in the morning and she said, Hey, Justine's coming over cause her wi is messed up and she needs that to work. So let's come over. And the thing about having workaholic friends, I mean, some of you think, oh, you're going to go to Bianca's and you're just going to play all day and eat whatever, what do people eat? Pizza or whatever and watch movies and talk and not do anything. Yeah. That's not how that works with me and Bianca and Justine. Um, Bianca's house, when she says, come over for a work day, it's an actual workspace. Uh, Justine took over the living room to do her job. Uh, Bianca and I went into her studio and did a live show in her studio on her page, the Art of Bianca page. We were there for, oh, an hour and a half easily. Easily. And the thing about Bianca is she deletes those videos after she goes live. So all those stories we tell and all those things we talk about, it's gone. If you are not one of the, I don't know, 10 or 12 people who were there that day and popping in and checking it out, you missed it and you will never see it again. Me, I'm the opposite kind of person. I do these videos and I'm thinking, maybe today I should download them and try to post them on YouTube so everyone can get everything. Because <laughs> I happen to like the Alethea show. So, I don't know. Yeah, Bianca's very different about it. I think also because she draws live and paints live. And she doesn't necessarily want to be teaching someone her process. Despite the fact that if you just popped in and watched her, you would see the process. But she doesn't want to keep that online forever for posterity so someone can just copy exactly how she does something. Which I kind of get. I can't copy how I do my brain. I mean, you know, plagiarism is a thing. But I've had a review that says, I would not want to live in that brain. That is too scary. So, yay! I particularly enjoyed that review. That was good. So while at Bianca's, I cannot write. That is the one thing I cannot do. I can maybe write an essay, uh, nonfiction, something nonfiction, a review. Oh, thank you, Nat. Nat loves the videos and kicks you in the butt. Well, I'm so happy to be here kicking you in the butt. Yay! <laughs> Kicked in the butt with a smile. That's me. Um, right. So I can't write at Bianca's house. I can't write fiction. I can do other things. And I knew I still had <coughs> that book, which I'm still halfway through and I have uh, notes for a blurb. So I'm close. I'm really close. Today, I'm going to take that off my list. Hi, Mark. And <laughs> I did not get to that book. I got to other things on my list. Things, one, that I did not expect, and two, that had been sitting on my list for so long, it's ridiculous. The one thing I did not expect, 
uh, or I had just forgotten about it, was Bianca had all those copies of Witch and Wizard that she's bringing to Megacon. It's like 40 copies. I'm allowed to say 40. She said it on the video. Now she deleted it, so that only remains on my video, that number. Only you guys know that number. But anyway, I signed all the copies of that book so that the books at Megacon will be signed not only by Bianca, but also by me. And that is super special and amazing. Bianca and I talked about, since you know, we live fairly close together, the problem is is that we're always both traveling all the time, so our, our spheres tend to, you know, I'll be over here and I'll be home when she's gone, and they don't always meet up. When the planets do align, which is more often in the winter, Bianca and I have planned to get a bunch of books, an amount of books, we have not decided on the amount, and have a signing party like we did last night. And then all of them, or we will split them. And some will go on Bianca's Store Envy and some will go on my Store Envy and we will all put them on sale at a particular time. Good morning, Lauren. A particular time during the day and everyone will know. It'll be like Ticketmaster and the tickets going on sale. And if she sells out at her store, which I suspect she will because she sells it. She does a lot more traffic through her store. My signed bookstore. Ah, I get it. I sell a few signed books a year, but I leave it up because I know, you know, it's good. Um, I want to make it available to you guys if you need it. So if her store sells out, people have to come to my store and buy my books if they want those signed books, because we're not going to do another round until it's all sold out and we are back in town in the same place again. And so then when that happens, so they're not going to be limited quantities. It's just going to be random times that you don't know. And if you want one, you better snag it. And you guys will know the secret. And that secret is, if you really want one, come to my website. Because hers are going to sell out ridiculously fast. It's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. And hey, maybe it'll drive more traffic to my site from her folks. And they'll find out things, you know, will broaden their horizons, force their bubbles to grow a little bigger. That will be good. So that was fun. We came up with that strategy over breakfast. Uh, Justine and I were also planning my Dragon Con outfit over breakfast. I was using the crayons. I should have taken a picture of this. I was using the crayons to sketch out the dress and we were making plans on the placemat. Good morning, Tiffany. Hi, Caro. We can't stop working, you guys. These work parties, yeah. It is, it is, <laughs> this hanging out with my girlfriends. Now my back is killing me right now. My neck is kill, killing me. I, uh, Bianca uses a lot of folding chairs, which I, I cannot use. Um, but I, I exercised a lot of bad posture. Um, during the live video, the chair I sat in actually had a cushion I gave her because I knew I would be at her house and need those cushions anyway. So I sat on that cushion during the live video. The rest of the time I sat on the couch, but she also brought out a table. I probably should have asked her for like a TV tray, but she brought out a table which was too high uh, for me to sign the books on, and that took way longer than it should have. Um, yeah, I'm hurting. You know what, let's take some medicine. I'm hurting today. Uh, the thing that I forget at Bianca's, I don't forget to work. I forget to take care of myself. So um, I have to be very conscious of things like, did I eat? Or when was the last time I drank some water? Because that is the danger at Bianca's house. Um, and it is really dangerous because I have a tendency toward migraines. I, my body doesn't like it. It holds in stress. Obviously I'm in a lot of pain right now and probably some of that is because I drink less than half the amount of water that I normally drink in a day. I didn't take any medicine when I was there. We ate twice, once for breakfast, but it was a late breakfast. It was like 10.30. And then we didn't eat again until five. But we ate, which just, we were picking up food on the way home, but first we had to stop and get an oil change. That was me. And then we had to stop at UCF for Bianca's Prince. That was Bianca. And then um, we went and ordered the Chinese food. And while we were waiting for the Chinese food, we went shopping at Publix because it's in the same shopping center and Bianca needed a bunch of stuff. So that took a little longer maybe than it should. So by the time we came home, I mean, Justine was ready to take her break, which was great, but yeah, we didn't eat till five. Don't tell Tempest, she'll be really mad at me. 
So when I say I have a problem with the not eating, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And Chinese food was probably not the best thing to be my like only big meal of the day. Ah, whatever. Hey, for breakfast, you guys would be proud for me for breakfast. It's a Greek diner that we went to, so I had eggs and gyros. Like that's it. Not it. I had no carbs. She's like, don't you want the platter with the hash browns and the biscuits and the no? Because if I have carbs in the morning, I will be awful. Look, there's Bank. Hi, you guys. Uh, say hi to Bianca, everyone. That's her secret identity. <laughs> I know you never would have guessed by that name. Uh, so I did have eggs and gyros for breakfast, just protein. And I think that's probably what saved my butt throughout the day. But yes, Bianca, you and I do not eat or drink enough while we're at your house. It was great. And we did tons of stuff. So... I'm going to talk about Happy Bagel Fire now, which has been on my list forever. I'm not kidding. Habitica, if you guys ever play that little RPG on your phone that's like a to-do list RPG, make the Happy Bagel Fire t-shirt has been on that to-do list for months. When did you draw these, Bianca? She went through a phase. Bianca likes to do these crazy wild things that float her boat because if you're not creating what makes you happy, then why are you doing this, right? <laughs> um, so Bianca decided one day that she was going to draw things that were bad autocorrects. She was just going to draw them. So like her husband, Tim Grab, became the Time Crab. And the Time Crab is amazing. She posted, uh, I think she's still on her website, if you look at the Art of Bianca page, she posted the, Tim, the Time Crab button that will be available. Morning, Jenny. Hi, can we go? That will be available at Megacon. There will be a bunch of different buttons available at Megacon. What was the other one, the, the steampunk biscuit? Maybe that was Bianca Roman Stump, was a steampunk biscuit. So I, I said, oh, ha, ha, oh, did I? Oh no, I did not even request it. She drew it, unprompted, because back in the day, at one point in time, after the last election, because we all know what a crazy, regardless, I do not talk politics, but it is a fact to say the last election was crazy. I had two major books come out weeks before the last election. They tanked so hard, it affected me financially, and I went back into debt that I was trying to crawl out of. So it really, really affected my life, and I was very upset. I was upset and scared and it was hard for creators to create for a long time. And we referred to this massive horribleness as the dumpster fire. Folks still refer to it as the dumpster fire. Well, I was typing this on a tweet at like three o'clock in the morning and I don't know what prompted <laughs> autocorrect to change it to happy bagel fire. It changed dumpster fire to happy bagel fire. And in Aletheia world, as you know, shiny, shiny, glittery Aletheia world, happy bagel fire is so much more appropriate. So Bianca drew, actually drew the happy bagel fire. This is the original, this is the original happy bagel fire. It is a happy bagel. He's so happy. And he is en flambé, en flambé. It's wonderful. So, Happy Bagel Fire. I, <laughs> as you can see, obviously he needs to be a t-shirt. Justine even created, she took this and she made a little, she made a little words down at the bottom. Happy Bagel Fire. It was, all I had to do was upload it. And it took me forever to just do this. It's been on my to-do list forever. So yesterday when we came back after dinner and I stuffed my face full of Chinese food, I uploaded this to Redbubble. It is now available as stickers and mugs. The mugs are actually, I super need a Happy Bagel Fire mug. It is not even funny. I'll wait for something to go on sale. I bought some more stickers. More stickers because guess what? Ha <laughs> ha. Justine saw that Sticker Mule was having a sale and she made Happy Bagel Fire stickers. Oh, I forgot to flip the, I forgot to flip the video. Hold on so you can read this. Let me flip. Where's my... Where's my wrench? There we go. Happy Bagel Fire, everyone. And so these stickers, there are only five. There were more than these because 
One of them is now on my computer. And some of them, Bianca's cat ate. <laughs> so Bianca took the stickers the cat ate, and those will be at Megacon for those crazy people who want to collect stickers that Bianca's cat has chewed. Because apparently that, there's a whole sect of people who would love that. Hi, Paula. I have the other, wait, they, they keep multiplying. Now there are six. I have the other six, though this one's only slightly, slightly Ramsey toothed. It's fine. You can't, once you put that sticker on it, you can only really tell on the back. You can't tell on the front. So I will make these available, I don't know, at Dragon Con for sure. If I end up having a, an entire, an entire, uh, assortment of stickers before then, uh, perhaps I will put them on the store envy. So kissed by Ram Yes, there's Justine. See, Not, none of us can stop working. We're all working all the time, all the time. So yes, she gave me the original of Happy Bagel Fire and she also gave me the rights to create Happy Bagel Fire merchandise as I saw fit, which as you know, as a creator, is worth insane amounts of everything because that's wonderful. And so I can use that whenever I feel like. If I wanna use the Happy Bagel Fire as an emoji to show my frustration with the world, I may do that. So, cheers. This is my, this is my MarsCon mug. We were talking about MarsCon yesterday. This is the MarsCon, that's the guy. They have Mars bucks that you spend at the, at the dealer's room my favorite convention in Williamsburg, Virginia. That is my favorite. So also while I was gone, so the last two days I've been here, all I've gotten is like flyers and junk mail. This is what I got yesterday, you guys. 24 hours in my house is a little insane. And I know what some of these are, but I was like, hey, why don't I just open this all up in front of everyone? Because otherwise it may sit here forever and I will never take care of it. So a couple of these are books I'm going to review. So you will see these before anyone else. And this one is is not a, a YA. Is, well, it is a YA. It's, it's not a romance, you guys. But I specifically asked to, to review this book because of the title. And the title is The Babysitter's Coven. Doesn't that sound fun? And it comes out right before Halloween? Yeah, September 17th. So I will be reviewing The Babysitter's Coven. I, I have approval to review this book and I asked the publisher to send me a, a review copy. So now I have it in my hot little hands. Okay, what else do we have here? Ugh. Oh, here's a couple here. Yep, these are also books I have been approved to review. See, when I worked the other day to get um, on, on my uh, pitch list, those publishers, man, they send you those copies super quickly. Uh, Tiffany, you are on the sneak peek level. I will sneak peek my review for this because what if it's awful? I mean, I don't want it to be awful. It doesn't look awful. It has stars on the back and a teddy bear. I mean, right now, I think it's amazing. So does it live up to the cover or the title? Let's see. I will also be reviewing Symptom of a Heartbreak. It's about a girl uh, from med school. She's 16, so it's a little bit Doogie Hauser, only with a girl. This one, I mean, it's got romance written all over it. Better than the best plan. Beautiful. Is that the one about the girl who is the... Yes. She was living alone because her mom bailed on her and someone reported her and put her into foster care. And she ends up falling in love, I think, with the boy next door. But that's an angle that I have not dealt with yet on my reviews. I've done gender identity. Uh, we've done, you know, different, um, different cultures, different lifestyles, but I have not yet done one about foster care. Um, another one of these ones I'm going to do is about a girl who is deaf, which I also found amazing. Um, this one I'm super excited about, Dear Haiti with Love. Dear Haiti, uh, sorry, Love Elaine. So I'm super excited about this one too. She, she get kicked out of school her, when her school presentation goes very wrong. 
Elaine Beau Parlant finds herself suspended and shipped off to Haiti. So just that one line, you know, I was hooked. And uh, again, Haiti, not something I have read about on the column. So these books, I am, I am super excited about, super excited. Um, yes, oh, this, this table, this table is becoming such a mess. It has such amazing things on it, this table. But it is a giant mess. Okay, also, this one is a gift from a friend who was just crocheting her little heart out. She was crocheting, hi Jenna. Mwah. She was crocheting her little heart out and I was admiring her doily, doilies, like, you know, your grandmother would have all over the, uh, my French grandmother, not my Greek grandmother. My French grandmother would have them all over the house. And she did these, she did this one in this set of doilies that she had done. It was just like, oh, I tripped over a log yesterday and here are these seven doilies. It, and, and gorgeous and complicated. And one of them was like super bright green, like the bright green of my porch. And it was kind of a star pattern. And I said, oh my God, these are amazing. Um, they are so beautiful. And she said, I will send you them. And this was before the whole Nicole thing happened and everything, but her, her lovely note, which is in a hard like cardstock, so these don't mess up, does say, I am so sorry for your loss. She wouldn't let me pay her, you guys. I offered to pay her for shipping, at least for cost of materials, labor. I mean, this thing takes time. But uh, some of my friends do just do these because they love doing them and they need to keep their hands busy. So I will hold this up against the white. She gave me, oh my gosh, it's like a whole set. Yeah, there are three of different sizes. I'm gonna see if that even shows up. Hold on, let me put it again. If I can put it against the bagel fire, maybe it'll show up better. Hold on. Look at this pattern. Is this not beautiful? So I have three now that look like this. It's like, a, it's like a cross between a star and a flower. How perfect is that for me? I fell in love with this so much. And like the chartreuse green. And green's my favorite color. It's, like, it's almost like a green gold. It's a very spring, spring kind of green. Here's the, here's the small one. It's super tiny. It's, so, it's like lace. It's so lovely. And I will put these all over my house. And every time I will see them, it will make me happy. And I'll remember that I have amazing friends who just give me things. Justine gives me things all the time. Uh, Tiffany, I will ask her. These are, are super complicated patterns that have names. They have names like, like heirloom roses have names. So uh, let me ask. It's my friend, uh, get her, Tammy Mitchell. So if you see me talking to Tammy Mitchell on a Facebook page, now granted I have not been on my profile page as much as I have been on this page. Um, and I feel a little weird sometimes about inviting people to my author page because it sounds so like, like I'm trying to shill something. I'm always trying to shill something. Buy my book. But uh, <laughs> it's just because I interact more. It's easier for me to cross post from Hootsuite onto this page so I know when I go storm chasing all the photos are going to end up here first. I'll post them on the profile page later when I have time but for the meantime they're going to end up on the they're going to end up on this page you guys will see it first. If you pop in make sure you say hi this chat goes by really fast so I miss some things. I always go by and um, again I like the Alethea show so I will go back and rewatch it and I always make sure I see all your comments. Hi, good morning, Sierra. Happy birthday. Is today your birthday? Happy birthday. Happy shenanigans, either way. But happy birthday. Mwah. Love you, girl. You are a star. This, I am annoyed, this box that I am opening right now, I am annoyed that it came in yesterday while I was gone to Bianca's house because Bianca got her copies in early. And I, I don't know, oh, they were probably waiting to ship this extra thing. Because here are my copies that are not signed by Bianca. Ah! Hi, Luke. Isn't this a pretty book? Yeah, I'm so proud of my book. Luke is an artist also doing mermaid. He's doing really crazy weird things. What did you do, like a mule? Mermule? 
also doing a crazy mermaid. You and Bianca, it's it's su super funny how you guys do mermaid. It's it's for those of us with the subversive mindset, really enjoy the mermaid. That is not look here's another Disney princess as a mermaid. I love this book so much. So when I get these signed, uh, I don't know if I'll stick them on Store Envy or send them to the Patreon folks. I haven't decided, but these are my personal copies to do with as I will. But they're not signed by Bianca, which is very sad. Oh, it's Comic Palooza. So Bianca's husband, Tim, is at Comic Palooza. Make sure you go say hi, Jenny's off to Comic Palooza. I was there with her a couple years ago. That's when I got laryngitis really bad, if you guys remember. Oh my gosh, do you still have a box of my books from Comic Palooza? I feel like I left some there with you because the sales that year were terrible. Let's hope sales this year are much better. So anyway, Tim is at Comic Palooza with all of Bianca's art. Janet Lee is at Comic Palooza. She is sitting right across from Neil Adams. I hope this helps her traffic instead of taking away from it because sometimes when people get to the end of the line, they just leave. Um, so I hope that helps her traffic. I always want my friends to do well. And Janet, uh, Janet's art is so wonderful. You know, I've loved Janet forever. She's like my sister. You know, if I have spent multiple Thanksgivings with your family, you are my family. So, <laughs> Jenny does still have a box of my books. These are my true friends, you guys. They will hold my inventory hostage for me so that I will come back to Comic Palooza one day. I hope that happens. Assuming that I don't go storm chasing every May for the rest of time. Because, let me tell you what, if you ask me right now, I would say yes. Yes, I would love to go storm chasing every day for the rest of my life. Uh, or every May, every May for the rest of my life. But next year, I really want to go to MoCon. I've sort of promised Maurice that I would do a keynote speech at the uh, Alethea Contest inaugural, in, inaugural. It's not the inaugural. That's the first. But like the opening night, opening ceremonies, the Alethea Contest chicken marsala dinner is, has been the opening ceremonies for a long time. And I said I would give a keynote. And I don't do a lot of keynotes, you guys. I did a keynote for the Lewis Carroll Society, Alice in Wonderland, 150th anniversary in New York, because they asked me. It was a lot of work. I got my UV protection lens for my camera so that if I drop it, it won't break because that's the real danger in like when you're running around. You try to have the strap on you at all times. I did not drop Chris's camera last year, but it is something you worry about. I also got in um, some di some memory memory cards. You need two for the cam each camera. So I got my memory cards for my camera and my UV lens. So now I feel comfortable going out into the wilds. Chris said, again, with more surety, that we would probably be leaving uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I hope it's Tuesday. I mean, I hope it's tomorrow. It's not gonna be tomorrow, but Tuesday. I can live with Tuesday. Um, and I have one more thing that I wanted to show you guys. Oh, two more things. Sorry, I realized I got this too. <laughs> so Sarah had posted about this because I have the one with the star. But she posted, there's a whole four pack that you can get and they come in all different designs. So these came in soon, so that means I can take them storm chasing. Look at all my eyeballs. So this one is, one is stars, and it's always good to have backup on the stars. This one is flowers. This one is hearts. These are the little stamps that I can just put all over my face. Natalie, oh, I miss you so much. I'm going to an Angels and Airwaves show, and I bought an extra ticket for my friend Kit, but let me tell you what, I wish you were coming with me. Natalie's my concert girlfriend buddy and I love we loved going to concerts together and I miss that um, I miss you very much <laughs> this one is a star this one is the star and this one is the moons so that's what I inscribed in all of the witch and wizards I couldn't remember I can't remember all the poems yet off the top of my head so I flipped through sort of looking for a line of a poem I could use as a catchphrase and one of I think it's called Friendship, the poem says. It ends with the line, let's shoot for the moon. So that became what I wanted to write in the beginning. Also because there is a moon on the cover of the book. 
So organically, it came together that when I signed, so Bianca and I signed the inside cover because it's this lovely blank canvas. And when we sign it, I have the top and I write shoot for the moon in all my pretty colors and stars and, and fairy dots. And then Bianca down here draws the moon with a star hanging from it. And, and it's beautiful. I drew the moon in Justine's. We dedicated it to Justine. Did you see that, guys? I got to see if I can um, get that off Instagram before it goes away forever. But it's dedicated to Justine and Maureen, Bianca's mother-in-law, and because we love them. And you should dedicate books to people that you love. Although I have a friend, I won't say who, who used to dedicate books to people. She doesn't do it anymore. Because every time she dedicated a book to a person, that person ended up hating her. Isn't that awful? If I dedicate a book to you, you guys, it's because I love you. I dedicated a book to my brute squad, and I love dedications. I love the dedication in Truth About Cats and Wolves that is to anyone who has ever walked with me in the Dragon Con parade. I love that dedication because if people come up to me and recognize the Marriott carpet pattern on my dress somewhere, I say, do you know I dedicated a book to you? It's so much fun and they love it because they appreciated it. They are my they are my family. Caro is my parade family and my brute squad family. Caro, you're just family all over the place. And the original Menyon Kenyan Posse family. And Caro and I were just meant to meet at some point. Despite the fact she lives in Wisconsin, we were meant to meet. It was meant to be. Um, okay, so the last <laughs> the last thing, which was totally a bonus side thing that uh, when Bianca and I did that side trip to Publix, when we placed our order at the Chinese place, I picked up, I don't know, some nuts on the road, spicy ones, I got the sriracha cashews. They were on sale and they're sriracha cashews. I like spicy things. But I saw this in the flower shop because it's Mother's Day and they have pretty things in the flower shop for Mother's Day. And there was no price. I didn't care because it was so pretty. I bought it anyway and here's what I bought it. Yes, I dedicated tricks um, to Jenny's son and Josh. Yeah. Yep. I dedicate my books to people I love because I want them to live forever. Look at these flowers. This is an azalea, you guys. I have never seen an azalea with flowers like this. Aren't they gorgeous? They are just gorgeous. And I don't know if it's like a white azalea that was had some red dye or if every I mean it looks like every flower really is the buds look like a raspberry swirl so I think the flowers really bud like this I don't or really um just grow like this naturally it's gorgeous so I had a little azalea like this that I killed because like an idiot I didn't take this plastic off so I watered it and the azalea sat in the water and it rotted and it was awful and it killed my azalea so I will be taking this off immediately. Um, I realized I'm technically with this selling, celebrating myself for Mother's Day, but I'm a fairy godmother, you guys. I deserve some love too, right? Never gonna have kids of my own. I have the kids that I make out in the world. Like Jenny's sons. <laughs> I like being a fairy godmother. Hi, Chris. I'm fairy godmother to her sons too, even though they probably don't know that. So I love these flowers. Love them. Love them so much. So I had to buy, and look how giant this is. So when they rung it up, I said, how much is this? I have no idea. And they said, I don't know, $8.99, something like that. So I bought it because I thought it was worth it. Now I have no idea where I'm going to plant it. I would have some idea, but it's a full sunspot. And I think Azalea is like a little bit of shade. Chris said Azalea is like a little bit of shade. So there is a place in the backyard there's a place in the backyard. Yep, there's some shade toward the back 40. The back 40, I call it. Uh, the trees behind where the fence was. When I had a fence, I have this uh, privacy fence in my backyard. And when we moved in, I was like, there are all these amazing trees in my backyard and you can't see them because there's a fence in the way. There are no trees in my yard. There are trees on the other side of the fence. So, I was looking at it and I don't mind the fence on this side or the fence on that side because it shields me from the neighbors. They deserve their own privacy and so do I. I am the mother of great books and stories. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate that. 
So I don't mind having the privacy and giving privacy to my neighbors, but I was like, can we just take the back part of the fence and just knock it down? Just let me see the trees, leave the sides. I wanna see the trees. So I came home from a conference and we were still working on the house and I was painting the window in the guest room and my parents had said nothing. And I'm painting the window in the guest room and I'm in the middle of painting the window and I went, oh my God. And I came running out in the house and I said, the fence is gone, the fence is gone and it looks amazing. There was, there was no yard. There was no, uh, there was so much trash in this yard. There was no grass. Everything was dead. I mean, there was no grass. So it's amazing that my yard filled in so quickly. But I flipped because it looked so amazing. And my parents laughed their faces off and they were like, we didn't tell you and it took you so long to notice. <laughs> because I'm a writer, I live in my own little world. Sometimes I'm hyper, hyper observant and notice things right away. And I don't notice things, normal things, like is a person married? I don't know, I don't look at ring fingers. Has a person gained or lost weight? I don't know, nor care, nor is it any of my business. Um, has a person had a haircut? If it's drastic, I might guess that one, but I am, I am oblivious to those love, that level of things. So yeah, the fact that my fence had been knocked down, I just had been in my own little world. I was painting, I was focused, and I didn't notice, but it was an amazing thing. And then later on it turned out, while I was gone to another conference, it was a good thing we knocked down the fence because my dad found as if in an archeological dig in Egypt, found a sprinkler system. Ta-da, magic, I had a sprinkler system. This is one of the reasons my lawn grew back so well. <laughs> he just had to get, call somebody to fix the pump. The actual sprinkler system was in pretty decent shape. Um, still a couple of heads need to be replaced of solenoid valves or whatever. And dad, you know, tinkered with those and fixed those, but we didn't need to drill, drill lines, you know, dig lines with a ditch witch or anything lay the pipes, nothing. The sprinkler was already there. But apparently the whoever installed the sprinkler system was not the same person who installed the fence because the fence was, the sprinklers went beyond the fence. So had we found the sprinkler system, we would have realized that there were sprinklers that were shooting the back of the fence trying to get to the lawn. <laughs> and that would have been awkward. But since the fence was already gone, uh, the sprinklers could shoot into the yard unimpeded and that was kind of hilarious so it was another way of the universe saying it was a good idea you had to knock that fence down very good idea so yeah the sides of the fence of course get pummeled I mean I think because I knocked down the back of the fence it does change the way air flows into my backyard and during hurricanes and bad storms my fence tends to get pummeled. My gate is trashed. Oh, it was trashed before Irma, now it's super trashed. We replaced one side of the fence, um, but yeah, where the gate is and that other side still needs to be replaced. Um, it's bad, it's super bad. But again, time, money, weather, all of these things have to, all the planets have to align in that respect uh, for that to happen, so one day, in the meantime, I will plant my flowers, maybe over by the fence that's done and not by the fence that's broken because uh, it's gonna have to be teared, torn down and I don't want plants getting in the way of that. So I'm trying to be conscious of that and be a good homeowner. <laughs> It'll probably be my dad and my brother who replace the fence. So I, I wanna make their work as easy as possible. So work, what work do I have today? I. I'm going, yeah, getting my oil changed and the Happy Bagel Fire, like I was knocking stuff off my to-do list that I, didn't even occur to me, it was amazing. I tried to work, make a bumper sticker for Sticker Mule. I did that because they've been having, um, they've been having specials. Bianca and I came up with the most amazing design for a bumper sticker, but unfortunately, because we had had to fix it already in Sticker Mule, when they sent me the proof, they sent me a previous design which I still love. It's got the Pat Dragon, Pat's Dragon, the Princess Lethia's Traveling Sideshow Dragon with the Marriott carpet wings. We call him the Pat's Dragon. He's on there and it says Princess Lethia's Traveling Sideshow, but the background's just white. 
Um, I am gonna get 50 of those, so I may try to sell out before we make the super fancy bumper sticker. But I don't know if they have another sale. I might try to do my uh, design with Bianca again, because that was really, really fun. That was super fun. Um, and I would love to put one of those on my car. That would be great. So anyway, today I am going to do the review, the, um, not review, but the blurb for the book. I will spoiler it for you guys, since I'm spoiling everything for you guys. This is Annie Sullivan's first book, Touch of Gold. I am blurbing her second book. It's called The Tiger Queen, I think. It's based on that story, late The Lady or the Tiger. Do you remember reading that in school? I remember that story haunted me a lot in school, the lady and the ti the lady or the tiger, because someone gets to choose between two doors and behind one is a lady and behind one is a tiger and they choose and then the story ends. And you don't get to know what the person shows. But you know throughout the course of the story what the consequences would be should each person should each of them have been the choice. So rearrange my new bedroom. Oh my goodness. You have done a ton, Nat. Well done on the move. Um, I'm going to blurb that book, which is good because I probably should lay down some more on the heating pad. So that's going to happen. And then I've also done some preliminary plotting for the Chaos Crushers novel. So I may just go ahead and start writing some of that. Um, between, I've thought more about what Chris and Naomi and I brainstormed. Um, I've been thinking about it every night before I go to bed, which is probably why I've been sleeping better because I've been falling asleep faster and going back to sleep when I wake up at five o'clock in the morning because I want to think about, uh, the, the complicated plot that I'm going to have in this one that I really am. I am totally loving this plot. Um, yeah, those are the two things I really, really want to work on today. Oh, also because it's Saturday. Happy Saturday, everyone. This weekend, I have been ta given the task of writing the poem for Nicole's prayer card. So I jotted down some notes last night. Um, of course, I said yes when they asked me. Absolutely, I want to. Can I think of something off the top of my head? No. Is it going to dredge up a lot of emotions? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure I will cry a lot. Um, one of my gifts that you don't re realize it's a gift until you get it, until you have to use it, is that I write amazing eulogies. And I have told many people of my acquaintance, I've told Alana, I think I've even told you guys, I do not want to write your eulogy, don't make me write your eulogy. <laughs> Stay alive forever, please, that would be great. So um, I did not know Nicole as well, so um, I have no business writing her eulogy, but it is appropriate that I should be writing her the poem for her prayer card. So I've made some notes on that and I will be thinking about that uh, today and tomorrow. It's Mother's Day. Um, yeah, and my parents are with, with Nana. So, but I did get Bianca to draw in my mom's book. I'm so excited. So I will have mom's Mother's Day presents when she gets back and I will be able to give them to her and then I will still be home and hopefully I will be leaving the next day for storm chasing. Fingers crossed you guys. All right I'm going to clean up this mess. I have nested so much around this table it's ridiculous. My house is starting to entropy and it's uh <laughs> I have to do things. I had to cut my bangs again this morning. I'm gonna have to cut my nails again. I, all of these things I didn't think I would have to do again before storm chasing I'm having to do. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a, a clean up the house, take care of things, and undo entropy a little bit today. Love you guys all so much. My life is a better place with you in it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Mwah.